Shalom, praises to Yahweh, Ba'asham, Yahweh Shai, Ba'asham, Rakah, Kadash, double honors unto the apostles and elders, a great millstone who rule well, and Shalom to the whole full elect. <clears throat> this video is um, going to be entitled New Heavens and New Earth, and I'm going to open up with this, is Second Peter 3 and 13. Nevertheless, we, according to his promise, look for new heavens and a new earth wherein dwelleth righteousness, and that's where we're looking for. And really to um to understand why we look to these things we're looking for a new heaven and a new earth we have to uh, you know why why would we be looking for a new heaven and a new earth if this earth is here presently and everything's just fine because the answer is because it ain't fine okay now in order to understand we have to go back to the beginning all right and we'll go back to the beginning what you find is um, when the Most High made the earth, he gave it the name Eden, okay? Which Eden in the, the Hebrew, Lashwan Kudash, okay, which Lashwan is um, tongue and Kudash is holy. So the holy tongue being the Ibayaf, which is the Lashwan Kudash word for Hebrew, okay, which Lashwan Kudash is the Hebrew. Okay, so basically, it says um, in Genesis 2 and 9, I'll read this and I'll break it down. It says, Genesis 2 and 9, And out the ground made the Lord power to grow every tree that is pleasant to the sight and good for food, the tree of life in the midst of, midst of the garden, and the tree of knowledge of good and evil, and a river. Sorry, I was meant to start from 8. Um, and the Lord power planted the garden eastward in Eden. Now the garden that was planted eastward in Eden is a day in the land, would, would, what would be described as the land of Jerusalem, Yerushalayim, the land of Israel, okay? Because that's where the most High dwells, it's where he puts his feet, that's where he rests. And there's, you know, a great energy and power there because that's a holy land. As the Lord told, he said his feet rest there in the book of Kings. And also when the, um, the um, Cush got moved into that land during a time of um, when the Northern Kingdom got taken out in um, 2 Kings 17, I believe. Basically what happened is the land spewed out the people that came in. And, and they, they were told that by who? A priest, okay, a Levite. He told them the manner of this land ain't as, as others. There's a way where you must live in the land in order to, to thrive in the land. So that's how they'll taught all the, the customs of our of the Israelites in order to actually abide in that land. Okay, because that that's a great energy there. So this is the same thing. That's why it says in Galatians 4 and 26, for Jerusalem, which is above is free, which is the mother of us all, because that's the motherland. Okay, that's where man was formed from. And that's why the Most High did this. And the Lord Power, Yahweh, um, planted a garden eastward in Eden, I done, which means pleasant, sorry, which means paradise. Okay, so the whole earth was known as a paradise. Now, anyone that thinks of a paradise, they think of somewhere like the Caribbean or certain places within the Mediterranean that have plush surroundings. Uh, you know, ambient surroundings and whatnot. That's how the whole earth was in the beginning. But this, the where the land of Israel was, where that garden was planted, was esteemed higher than all of them. And there he put the man whom he had formed, okay, Adam, and out of the ground made the Lord power to grow every tree that is pleasant to the sight and good for food, and a tree of life also in the midst of the garden. So yeah, one second. <laughs> Which is in the midst of the garden, the tree of knowledge of good and evil. And a river went out of Eden to water the garden. From thence it was parted and became into four heads. Sorry. The name of the first is Python. That is which compasseth the whole land of Havala, where there is gold. Okay, and the gold of the land is good. There is Bedalim, an onyx stone, and the name of the second river is Gaon, which, 
the same is it that compasses the whole land of Ethiopia. So, it, you know, there was abundance of mineral resources and area. Okay, it was a great and, and pleasant land to dwell in. Okay, um, and this can't be showed more how great, how, how pleasant the earth is. You know, we, we dealt with the land of Israel, but it said the whole earth was known as paradise. So, this is the things that are brought forth in the time when the land was at its, you know, in its condition. The earth was first formed. And in the early stages, Numbers 13 and 23, and they came unto the brook of Esco, um, Esh, Eshko, and cut down from hence a branch with one, cl with one cluster of grapes, and they bare it between two upon a staff, and they brought of the pomegranates and of the figs. So that shows you that two, two men, and men were stronger back then, okay, two, two, two men had to bear that on their shoulders in order to bring one cluster of grapes. So that shows you the abundance of what the land brought forth. But then when you go into the book of Second that's just the fifth chapter, it basically speaks about how the earth has been, you know, actually I'll just read it, you know, subsiding in its strength. And just so you know, you see it in here, but I, I ain't gonna delve with those books. This app, they've added Enoch, Jasher, and Jubilees. They ain't, they ain't part of the Bible, man. Those books ain't part of the Bible. The Apocrypha, everything else you see from First Ezra to Second Maccabees, that's in the Word. But that that ain't included. All right, Second Ezra five. I'm gonna start from forty eight. And it reads, Then said he unto me, Even so have I given the womb of the earth to those that be sown in it in their times. For like as a young child may not bring forth the things that belong to the age, even so I have disposed, disposed the world which I created. Okay, reading on. And I asked and said, Seeing thou hast not now given me the way, I will proceed to speak before thee. For our mother, mother earth, Jerusalem, the mother of us all. Okay, of whom thou hast told me that she is young, draweth now nigh unto age. He answered me and said, Ask a woman that beareth children, and she shall tell thee. Say unto her, Wherefore are unto they whom thou hast now brought forth like those that were before, but less of stature? And she shall answer thee, They that are born in the strength of youth are of one fashion, and they that are born in the time of age when the womb faileth are otherwise. Consider thou therefore also how that ye are also less in, ye are less of stature than those with those that were before you, and so are they that come after you less than ye, as the creatures which now begin to be old and have passed over the strength of the youth of youth. So basically though the, the the earth okay when it first was made the paradise that's when it, it, it brought forth the greatest um of fruit. It, it, when you would have um reaped what you sold in the land, the fruit of it it would have been abundant. The the men they would have been higher in stature, the women would have been higher in stature, they would have been more of a marvel to look upon. But guess what, through the process of time, that's been, that's the, the earth is aged, okay, and, and worsened in its strength. Now what you got to understand is as well, the earth also has been defiled, okay, so that, that on top of that, the natural process of the earth aging, you have the fact that the land was defiled, okay, and the first start of this is in the book of Genesis 3 and 17 where it reads and unto Adam he said because thou hast hearkened unto the voice of thy wife and has eaten of the tree of which I commanded thee saying thou shalt not eat of it curse is the ground for thy sake in sorrow shalt thou eat of it all the days of thy life so the earth was cursed going back to the time of Adam because of his, his, his the, the, ah, the fall of man all right but then when you read on into the next chapter, it, all tells, it also tells you about Cain as well. All right. Genesis 4 and 9. And the Lord said unto Cain, 
Where is Abel thy brother? And he said, I know not. Am I my brother's keeper? Okay. Him being wicked. And he said, Thou has what hast thou done? The voice of thy brother's blood crieth unto me from the ground. And now art thou cursed from the earth which have opened her mouth to receive thy brother's blood from thy hand. And you know, Cain was cursed, alright? When thou tillest the ground, it shall not henceforth yield unto thee her strength, a fugitive and a vagabond that shall be in the earth. Okay? So he was slated to be a fugitive and a vagabond on the earth as as part of his judgment. And it also tells you about the earth being cursed because of what? He slayed he, he slew his brother and the blood that fell upon him made it defiled. It's the same and that's why it says in the book of Numbers um, 35, 33 it tells you how blood defile you shall not pollute the land where, wherein you dwell for blood defileth the land and the blood cannot the land cannot be cleansed least by the shedding of the blood of him that shed it loosely paraphrasing so basically when you're dealing with Esau well Cain he did he did that and what was Cain doing when he was on earth he was running around he, he said, actually, I'll read on. It says, he says, and Cain said unto the, the Lord, My punishment is greater than I can bear. All right. And he said, Behold, thou hast driven me out this day from the face of the earth, and from the face, thy face shall I be hid, and I shall be a vagab fugitive and vagabond in the earth, and it shall come to pass. And that's why, <laughs> that's why Esau don't have no face. <laughs> face. You don't have no one um, faith. Okay. Because the Most High hid his face from him. For this act, and he, he acknowledged it, he said, From thy face shall I be hid, and I shall be a fugitive and a vagabond in the earth, and it shall come to pass that everyone that findeth me shall slay me. Okay? Because they're looking, because of the way he's looking crazy, like he needs to be slew due to the lack of uh, melanin color, which basically was a curse of Cain. All right? Verse 15 And the Lord said unto him, Therefore, whosoever slayeth Cain, vengeance shall be taken on him sevenfold. And the Lord set a mark upon Cain, lest any should find, find in him, should kill him. So I jumped the gun with that. But basically, they knew of the act that he did and what he had done and the fact that he had been cast from the face and it, that people would have been onto him. But that's why the Lord set a mark upon him. Why? Because the Lord set him up to actually be that wicked man and even set within his heart to actually do even it ever so more, okay? Because he said he he told him, look, therefore whosoever slave came, vengeance shall be taken on him sevenfold. So if anyone tries to kill, they, it was known that look, if anyone tries to kill this man Cain or any of the Canaanites, you know, descendants of Cain, basically the Lord through the Spirit, you know, the Spirit's with him being alive. If you try to kill him. He's gonna come back at you sevenfold. And what was the name? What was Cain's mean of Cain's name? Um, which is Quayan, means dagger. Okay, and a dagger is really a weapon of choice. If you if you want to kill someone, it's usually used in close quarters in a, in a surprise attack. Okay, it's not necessarily a, a weapon you would come front face on, upon someone because you'd have to have a lot of strength and brute force to do that. You'd rather use something like a sword or a spear or something of that effect where you have some leverage. But Esau, I mean Cain, Quayun, being the, the sly fox that he is, you know, he pats you on the back and the third, what you believe is going to be the third pat is a stab in the back, you know? So that's why the Lord set him up. Point being, the Lord set a mark upon Cain, at least any find him should kill him so you know that, look, don't mess with him. And if you do, Vengeance will be taken upon you sevenfold. And that's the same thing today, okay? That same spirit of Cain is in Esau today. And guess what? Anyone to take vengeance on Esau, that same, the same, um, he, he's coming back at you with brute force, man. You really, and it's to the point where he knows it and he don't even, he, he just outright does whatever he pleases, okay? Because he got the blessing. And I think I'm just going to read to the point. Uh, 
I just want to read this Genesis 27 and 40 And by thy sword shalt thou live And shalt, thou shalt serve thy brother And it shall come to pass When thou shalt have dominion That thou shalt break his yoke From off thy neck Okay So that's when he's just going to break the yoke Off his neck But it's showing you going back to Cain Which is the same spirit of Esau That as it says in Proverbs 16 and 4 the Most High has made all things unto, his, unto himself, yea, even the wicked for the day of evil. And that's the time we're in, okay? Because that's how the earth has been defiled on a greater level through many means, okay? We're, to, we're not talking about only warfare being uh, and blood being shed upon the earth. We're talking about the actual, the way the earth is being um, handled in general. Which makes me, which brings me to the scripture, you know, Proverbs, um, Job nine nine twenty four tells you the earth is given into the hand of the wicked. So presently, we know that it's in his hand because of this reason. Isaiah twenty four four, the earth mourneth and faileth away, the world languisheth and faileth away, the holy people of the earth do languish. Okay, and it, it, this guy is such a devil that even unto himself. <laughs> He can't do no good. Okay, so what more the people on the earth, right? The earth also is defiled under the inhabitants thereof because they have transgressed the laws, changed the ordinance, broken the everlasting covenant, all right? So this, this is the reason why the earth is defiled. It says because they have transgressed the laws. The laws, basically the, the, the law, statutes and commandments of the Heavenly Father is the instruction manual on how to live upon the earth and to live abundantly. Now, it's the same with any piece of equipment or anything you may purchase. You're going to have an instruction manual. If you don't follow it, it don't mean you can't use it. I mean, you may have some use out of it, but to get the, the, you know, the proper full use out of it without no problems, you have to understand what you're using. All right? And, and that's why it says in Proverbs 4 and 7, wisdom is a principal thing. Uh, Lucy paraphrasing. Like, um, let me read it, I don't want to butcher it. It says, Wisdom is the principal thing, therefore get wisdom, and with all thy getting, get understanding. So, you know, and that's found in where? The Holy Scriptures, the Bible, right? Therefore have the curse devoured the earth, and they that dwell therein are desolate. Therefore the inhabitants of the earth are burned, and few men left. And that's why the earth is in this in this predicament that it's in. Okay, because Esau is ruling over the earth. Isaiah 26 and 10, let favor be shown to the wicked, yet will we not learn righteousness in the land of the upright, upright of uprightness? Will he deal unjustly and will not behold the majesty of the Lord? Okay, and that's why he's over there in the land and he, he's using the sewage system to um, basically um there's a word, man, but for lack of a better word, water. There's actually a technical, technical term in the back of my mind. I can't remember it, but um, to water all the, the, you know, the, the 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 vegetation in the land of Israel, okay? Because the Lord, because he's he's basically doing unrighteousness in that land, okay? He's dealing unjustly, okay? This is Psalm 64 and 1. I'm going to read on down. The chief musician of Psalm of David, hear my voice, O power, in my prayer, preserve my life from the enemy, from, from fear of the enemy. Hide me from the secret counsel of the wicked. Hide me from the secret counsel of the wicked, from the insurrection of the workers of iniquity, who wet their tongue like a sword, okay, and bend their bows and and to shoot their arrows even bear words that they may shoot in secret at the perfect suddenly do they shoot at him and fear, and fear not they encourage themselves in an the evil matter they commune of laying snares privily they say who shall see them they search out iniquities they accomplish a diligent search both the inward thought of every one of them and the heart is deep okay and that's what they do that's why it's it's to the effect where Esau ain't only you know he, 
he ain't just, I mean, he is, in a sense, an idiot. Because he's just running around and fucking up the, 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 the land and the earth. But guess what? He's even having think tanks where he's sitting and trying to understand through what he deems as intelligence the best way, <laughs> through, you could say intel, information that he gathers of how to better mess up the earth. And the apostles brought up the point um, about the, the, the frequency, the tuning of the music, how prior to the, you know, prior to um, 1944, I believe is the year, I mean, it was 1955, should I say, where it became an industry, industry standard to tune, to, to have everything based at the frequency of 440 um, hertz, as opposed to before having it 432 hertz, that being harmonious with um, nature, that being the natural frequency that everything thrives at, okay? So those are things that, you know, that was a key example. Well, the key example, when I see apostles speak about that, that, that brought me to, you know, do this video. Because it shows you how diligent they are in the, the you know, real, they they really have a method to their madness, okay? So, um, now I want to finish up on these scriptures, okay? Uh... Let's go here, so rock 10. And we know in Proverbs 29 and 2, it says, when the righteous are in authority, the people rejoice. Um, Science to that effect. But here in Sirach, it, it delves more in depth on that. So this is rock 2, um, 10 and 1, reading down to verse 4. A wise judge will instruct, instruct his people, and the government of a prudent man is well ordered. As the judge of the people, as the judge of the people is himself, so are his officers. And what manner of man the ruler of the city is, such are they that dwell therein. An unwise king destroyeth his people, but through the prudence of them which are in authority, the city shall be inhabited. Okay? So wherever, wherever vibration is at the top is going to be filled through all, all levels of that city okay the power of the earth is in the hand of the lord and in due time he will set over it one that is profitable okay so for the longest time we've been waiting for the lord to come and basically set this earth in order and that's why as i read in the beginning it said you know waiting for new heavens and new earth all right because we're waiting upon the return of Yahweh Shai to, to, to set everything up right and have a harmonious, uh, you know, life upon the earth, all right? Because you know Esau's the devil. It tells you that in the book of First Maccabees, but when he came into, came into power, it says evils were multiplied upon the earth. So if they multiplied on the earth, going back to the time of the Greeks, into the Romans, and then they were taken out of power during the Dark Ages, and even during the Dark Ages, a lot of what they did, Jake carried on in a corrupted manner, basically ming intermingling, um, you know, things that have Jake custom alongside, um, you know, heathenish custom. But then, really, when es when Esau came back, that's when this shit was taken to a whole nother level. That's why it says in Matthew. Um, 24 and 21 this it says um, for then shall great tribulation such as not such as was not since the beginning of the world to this time no nor ever shall be and except those days shall be shortened there should no flesh be saved but for the elect's sake those days shall be shortened okay so basically the Lord said that look in this time that we're in if it weren't for the Lord, you know, if if Esau was left to rule and the days weren't shortened, basically there'll be no one left to save. And that shows you to what level Esau is dealing with. That's why it says in Revelations 12 and 12 that the devil knoweth, that is it, knowing that he has a short time. Because it tells you in Isaiah 47, 
that you know stand out of thy enchantments that have you you know done since thy youth that basically they have monthly prognosticators they basically got people delving into this they, they got spirits coming before them letting them know aware that you know the, the clock is ticking and that's why it says the devil knowing that he have a short time um 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 cometh down upon you with great wrath all right but you know the elect is going to be saved because the lord said what he said said you know but the, 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 you know it said what it said let me just read that again it said verse 21 of verse 22 and except those days should be shortened there should no flesh be saved but for the elect's sake those days shall be shortened so for the sake of the elect those days are going to be shortened okay I want to finish on this Isaiah 14 and 1 For the Lord will have mercy on Jake, Jacob And will choose Israel And set them in their own land And the strangers shall be joined with them And they shall cleave to the house of Israel So From verse 3 And it shall come to pass In the day that the Lord Shall give thee rest from thy sorrow And from thy fear And from the hard bondage Wherein thou wast made to serve that thou shalt take up this proverb against the king of Babylon and say, Have the oppressor ceased, the golden city ceased. The Lord hath broken the staff of the wicked and the scepter of the rulers. He who smote the people in wrath with a continual stroke, he that ruled the nation in anger is persecuted and none hindereth. The whole earth is at rest and is quiet. See, so it said the earth is at rest. For all these things, the wickedness that Esau has done, the pollution, the spilling of blood, the, you know, going against the Holy Covenant and everything, the, 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 the way you're meant to deal with the earth in terms of like the, the, the Jubilee, um, sorry, the land, of the, the Sabbath of the land, these different instructions that the Most High gave, the Lord, is, you know, if those things are going to be re-implemented and the earth is going to have its rest, they break forth into singing. singing. Yea, the fir trees rejoice at thee, and the cedars of Lebanon, saying, Since thou art laid down, no fellow is come up against us. Okay? So, the Lord is going to give the whole earth rest when this devil gets taken out of power. So with that, man, I pray you edified. Shalom.